We're back at A15. Our special coverage of the terror in Orlando continues this morning with a new interview with the gunman's father. Omar Mateen's father told NBC News what he would say to the grieving families of the more than 100 people hurt in the shooting. You have an opportunity to tell the families of all those. Well, I, I say as I share their pain and I, uh, I am as mad and as sad that you, you are and I'm with you and I like to come when the time is right to visit those injured, those families and share their pain. Mateen's father went on to say he never saw any behavioral change in his son to let him know that something was about to happen. Was your son radicalized in any way that you know of? No. No, he was, he was uh, taking care of his family, going to work. He doesn't have even a beard. He didn't miss his work. He was always on time. So I didn't see anything different than the way that he was behaving himself before. The gunman's ex-wife paints a different picture. Satora Yusifi says he was disturbed. She quickly filed for divorce just four months after they were married. She says Mateen was violent and short-tempered and physically abused her. I was devastated, shocked, started shaking and crying because more than anything, I was so, so deeply hurt and heartbroken for the people that lost their loved ones, and the families that are now suffering, the people that are being, that are wounded, that, that are healing. Instability, emotional instability, sickness, mentally, he was mentally unstable and mentally ill. That's the only explanation that I could give and he was obviously disturbed. She says she hasn't seen or spoken to Mateen or his family for eight years, but says she is angry to be affiliated with someone who would cause such harm. The head of the Islamic Center in nearby Fort Pierce, Florida, where Mateen prayed four days a week, says he was known for being violent and did not appear to have any close friends in the community. Mateen was known as a wild child who often behaved unruly inside the mosque and caused a lot of problems. He will come, he will pray, and he will leave. He will not come with any friend. We don't recall any friend of him in this mosque, and uh, uh, he will not socialize with anybody. He said the mosque did not teach Mateen to be violent. He says Mateen must have gotten that from the Internet. Colors lit up the sky in and around Orlando overnight. Several city landmarks reflected red, white, and blue, as well as rainbow colors to honor the victims. The famous Orlando Eye Ferris wheel dominated the skyline with its lights. A large crowd rallied outside New York City's Stonewall Inn yesterday to pay tribute to the victims of the shooting. Waving the gay pride flag, holding signs and shouting, people showed they would not back down in the face of hatred. The Stonewall Inn became an icon for the gay rights movement following a police raid and street riots back in 1969. There was a moment of silence last night before the San Jose Sharks and Pittsburgh Penguins squared off in Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Fans and players hung their heads to remember those who were gunned down. There were similar tributes at several other sporting events around the country yesterday. And last night's Tony Awards started with a tribute to the victims in Orlando. All we can say is you are not on your own right now. Your tragedy is our tragedy. Theatre is a place where every race creed, sexuality and gender is equal, is embraced and is loved. Hate will never win. Host James Corden and other attendees arrived with silver ribbons to show their support for victims of America's deadliest mass shooting. Our coverage of the terror in Orlando continues online. We have extra resources on wavy.com and there you'll find stories about how Hampton Roads is coming together to offer support along with information on how you can help by donating blood or money. You'll also find a timeline of events, stories of heroism and survival, and the growing list of names of victims police have released. Just head to wavy.com. And a reminder, 10 on your side's Tom Shad, who spent several years of his journalism career in Orlando, is heading there right now. Look for his live in-depth reports starting today at 4.